Hello everyone and welcome to this session by Nursing Education Network. This presentation is looking at the education in healthcare. Key learning outcomes are to introduce and provide an overview of the education theories in constructivism, experiential learning and communities of practice. The learning theory of constructivism requiring knowledge and learning through experience. This is the education perspective where we scaffold learning. So as educators, we need to think of is what is the purpose of the education we're delivering? What is it we intend the learners to learn? And also from the learner's perspective, what is, it, is expected of them? So these are what are the values, the attributes, skills that we need to be demonstrated and align with the learning outcomes and assessments and evaluations of our programs. Commonly from this constructive perspective, we look at Bloom's taxonomy. This will align with the learning outcomes. Look at the image there of the Bloom's taxonomy going from the simple to the complex, the concrete to the abstract. Things like recalling facts, rote learning basic concepts to elevate all the way up to the production and originality of work. And this will align as we work through, if we think in terms of healthcare and nursing, some of the expected skills and attributes and frameworks. Commonly, Benner, the novice to expert, or Bondi, dependent to independent. These are some of the common things we may have experienced as educators in assessing and developing, especially in the clinical setting, translating from that theoretical into the practical component and aligning and developing the nursing skills in both undergraduate and postgraduate settings. And how do we do this? Commonly through clinical supervision, constructive feedback, and encouraging reflection and learning from these past experiences and building on them. Experiential learning. We're now thinking about the education theory and linking this more into our healthcare setting. So linking the theoretical into the clinical and gaining some hands-on practical experience. And thinking of this as well, back to that constructivist, that novice to expert, independent dependent journey, and depending where we are in our learning journey. Again, we might be learning something new. We might be very experienced in moving into a new domain and we bring in past knowledge into the scenario and to the training as well. And these are important components for the educator to consider. Now, if we look at John Dewey's quote here, education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. So we'd see and we'd discuss terms such as adult learners, lifelong learning, workplace learning, informal and formal learning, self-directed learning, all this human cognition, the opportunity to learn. And this is when, as I say, the balance between this theory and the clinical, we're talking about the, the amount of hours, this sweet spot between how many higher education or the theoretical balancing between the clinical exposure as well, especially in the undergraduate setting in nurse and medical training. So if we look at the two pictures here, we've got Florence Nightingale and Sir William Osler, nursing and medical. So Florence Nightingale brought science and data and research to change clinical practice. She also used, used this data to change government national health policy as well. She was really a, a change in force in nursing and probably never had someone as well known and who has changed at such a high level since. But Florence also believed in nursing as a vocation not the professional component, the vocation, the passion, the hands-on, the, the bedside, the representation, the support of the patient from there. So there's a little bit of contradictory element there, but we have this 
at the bedside, hands-on component. Moving into the medical, the medical training was very theoretical. So William Osler brought the stethoscope to the bedside and made education and learning in the medical field at the bedside, involving the patient, involving hands-on component. And these are the things that we see. We see this now in education, in the safety element of training, bringing the safe container of simulation. Rather than discussing this or a case study, it's hands-on, it's more realistic in terms of fidelity components from there. So we see in these components all the way through, we'll see this in the change in elements of education. Education needs to change and things like technology, virtual reality, will change the components of how we experience and develop our skills and knowledge. Learning is best conceived as a process, not in terms of outcome. And again, as we discussed before in regards to that constructivist, that novice to expert, we need time, hours of clinical experience in different situations and elements such as the clinical supervision mentoring, role modeling, and the large component in regards to education of the experiential learning is the reflection component. So Gibbs and John, Kolb and Sean, the reflection in action, reflection on action, and using reflection to learn and develop, and also at times to provide feedback for situations as well. And these are all components of this theory of developing learning as a process, not just definitive numbers. Now looking at the education theory of the socio-cultural perspective by Leif and Wenger. And this is part of the human aspects where we want to be part of the group, we want to form and be part of a community. And it's learning through these communities, exposure to other beliefs, thoughts, experiences, knowledge that we learn and develop. So social learning systems create a, a view of knowing and practice as meaning. Looking at healthcare training and education, commonly we use the mentorship model. We become part of the team and really it's an apprenticeship framework as well, where we're, we're learning. We're, we're running from role modeling, the behaviors, the norms, what's expected as well as linking that knowledge to and theory into the practical setting as well. The teamwork component in healthcare, that collaboration into professional practice, where we value the members. In nursing, there's a common saying of eating our young. This is not always occurring that the junior nurses do not sometimes be, be part of the team or valued the same as student nurses as well. And we need to be aware of the cultural dynamics of the team as well and hierarchies and from there. We also learn from our peers as well. So peer support, peer learning is a vital component from the, the communities of practice across healthcare. The communities of practice, as I say, could be at the unit level, they could be at an organizational level. So they're vital in terms of how we learn, develop, and educate our staff. Other areas when we're talking about look, using technology, it's use of social media. These are creating new communities of practice, patients, staff, and healthcare workers, and engaging in these areas. And sometimes they often become focused into clinical specialities so smaller communities and also wider ones as well, depending on the topic. On the next slide, you'll see all the references we used for this presentation. Thank you and hope you enjoyed and speak to you soon.